Okay, so the next measure that I want to talk about is closeness centrality, and closeness centrality uh, is yeah, defined by the name. It's the node closest to all the other nodes in terms of the shortest average path length to those nodes. And closeness centrality, like degree centrality, can be calculated on a network that we don't know the direction of the ties. But like degree centrality, closeness centrality can also be, if you know the direction of the ties, broken down into closeness in terms of uh, people closest to, so closest in terms of people incoming ties to you, or closest uh, in terms of outgoing ties from you. In this case, we're calculating the global closeness centrality measure, and we find that Emma and Shane are both important players in this network. And again, they're equivalently important, and it's simply the fact that within this network, for everyone to be connected to them, it takes the least number of hops to get to Emma and Shane. A related measure to closeness centrality is betweenness centrality. Betweenness centrality has an advantage compared to closeness centrality in that closeness centrality requires being calculated over a fully connected graph or calculating within a single component. Betweenness centrality, you can have multiple unconnected components and calcul still calculate the measure. And again, what's a component? A component is a group of nodes that are all connected to each other. In many networks, all the nodes are connected to each other, so they form a single component. But in some networks, we can have components that are isolated from each other. So in those situations, we wouldn't be able to run a global closeness centrality. So what is between a centrality? Between a centrality is a measure of bridgeness. So in this one, we calculate all the shortest paths between the nodes. Then we calculate the fraction of the shortest paths going between any one node. And then we sum up the fractions over all pairs of nodes. And in this case, when we look at our example graph, we see instead of Emma and Shane being the critical uh, players that we saw in closeness centrality, now we see Liz. And why is that? Well, Liz is bridging between our sort of two sad uh, individuals, Alan and uh, Lisa, that are out at the exterior of the network, from the core of the network, from Jill and Mike and Leia and all those people. And Liz is that bridge. Liz does connect to Emma and Shane, but Liz is the junction point. If you took the, the node where all the shortest paths are going through, they're going through the most of them. They're going through Liz. And that's because poor Alan and Lisa are out there in the tails. These people are often very important people when looking at influence or looking at how information is uh, disseminated across the network. And between the centrality is a linchpin measure for looking at things like brokerage in a network. So, for instance, if you think that in important information is in different regions in a network, people with high between the centrality uh, unify the network, and so those people have brokering roles that may be important roles. So if we think that influence is an important thing in our network, then we want to pay attention to between the centrality. And notice now we're getting a different person than we did before. So in our first measure, in our degree centrality, we had Jill is central. Jill is really obvious. Um, we saw that Jill sends out lots of ties. So Jill has a high out degree centrality. But we saw a slightly different story with in degree centrality. We saw that Emma began and Shane began coming into the um, story. When we looked at closeness centrality, our closeness centrality measures uh, also confirmed that Emma and Shane might be important people because they are uh, closest to everyone else. And so if you're thinking of them as disseminating information throughout the whole network, uh, Emma and Shane might be important people. But now we've, we're looking at uh, brokerage or at uh, how the people that are connecting the network together, we're seeing now that Liz is an important person. So you can imagine if we have different research questions that are hinging on different positional properties that we think people are important for different reasons. Uh, we want to look at these measures separately and then we may come up with a, some kind of composite. So for instance, you know, based on these measures, at this point, Emma and Shane seem like very important people and they'd be people that I would be paying attention to. Overall, when we look at positional analyses, we don't want to get hung up quite so much on the individuals. One, 
we generally publish anonymized average data, and so you can publish a graph that may have ones and twos and things like that, but we're also interested in the generalizable properties of people. So we'll say, well, people on average have a high in degree centrality or out degree centrality, or that occupy on average this position are important people. We're just emphasizing people with names uh, to give you a clear sense of the measures. But when we're reporting these things and thinking about them overall, we're thinking, what is the impact of the position versus the impact of the specific individual occupying that position? And that distinction is an important distinction.